Hello, everyone. You are welcome to the panel, The Colonization of High Impact International Journals of Music. The organizers and presenters of this panel are Professor Christian Onyeji, Felicia Ezuhu, Dr. Felicia Ezuhu, Kingsley Ilo, Elizabeth Onyeji, Chudubem Onyekwelo, all from University of Nigeria. Academic and scholarly outputs from institutions of learning are documented and disseminated in different media, books, periodicals, monographs, electronic slides, etc. For the most part, periodicals in the form of journal publications are quite prominent and highly regarded in the academia due to the insistence on peer review mechanisms as a critical norm and force for its authentication and quality assurance. This tradition has been maintained over time in different knowledge cultures and locations, supported by the global academia. Quality or critical scholarly and research outputs were published without hindrance, bias or condescension in different international journals that have enjoyed high ratings in terms of impact and rankings. Before the 21st century, access to publish in international journals by African and Nigerian scholars was maintained. Nigerian musicologists still celebrate Mekin Zewi, Aki Yuba, Samuel Ababot, Lazarus Ekweme, Richard Okafo, Joshua Uziwe, Bode Omojala, and others whose articles in notable journals across the world remain reference materials. This trend has changed in recent times with journals, making very glaring distinctions between writers from the global north and those from the global south. Low acceptance rates of research submissions from Africa is very strong. And in recent times, making most scholars, particularly from Nigeria, very weary of the discriminations and constant rejections by gatekeepers. Stringent requirements by the journals cut off consideration of the challenges faced by scholars in many different global social cultural contexts. High impact journals are intolerant of submissions that do not meet their requirements, which are constructed on Western structures and norms. This indeed is a form of mental imperialism of the academia through the research outputs. African scholars are compelled to adopt Western models in article writings, consolidating the dependency syndrome. A conclusion can be drawn that if a publication does not match the requirements of the West, it is not worthy of inclusion. Access is denied based on such West-centric notions, or should we say, biases. The majority of Nigerian scholars are facing critical challenges regarding access and acceptance. Drawing attention to this challenge, this panel takes the position that the practice of high-impact music journals around the world is exclusionary, colonizing and negatively impacts access and dissemination of research and scholarly outputs mm -hmm. from disadvantaged and excluded global contexts and cultures. The panel is strongly disinclined to parochial Eurocentric perspectives and pressures for research to comply with European structures. The panel is inclined to more liberal and accommodating structures that weigh the impact of unequal social economic access and human development indices on research facilities, funding and outputs in public, in journal publications. The objective would be to find solutions that would enable greater access for Nigerian musicologists and researchers. The panel calls for a paradigm shift and a transformation in all spheres of high impact journal publication practice. Please, Carlos, Roll the audio. Decolonization of High Impact International Journals of Music Publication. Background and Framework. Research and scholarship are integral to tertiary education and knowledge development, 
world over. Research provides knowledge and means to knowledge expansion to both educators and learners for human and societal well-being. Refinement and consolidation of knowledge at different levels of education and human development rely on the level and depth of research and scholarship at different points in human history. It could be argued therefrom that every human cultural context prioritizes knowledge as may be relevant and necessary for the improvement and development of the society while at the same time seeking global relevance and reach. Institutionalization of teaching, learning, research and scholarship has enabled focused and value attention to ramifications of research and scholarship in various learning contexts of different human locations. The value placed on dissemination of research findings as universal product mandates priority attention to publications. Various publication platforms developed over time range from manual to electronic or virtual in recent times, some of which are books, periodicals including journals, monographs, manuals, electronic slides, virtual or an internet publications, etc. These forms of publication add value to research and scholarship as well as the educational processes for development of human knowledge and societal well-being. Dissemination of research findings and scholarly works through publications has since become highly valued as reliable means of ensuring similarity and unaltered versions of the published contents. It also ensures durability and permeation of published contexts beyond its local source. In doing so, however, attention to detail, quality and standard, veracity and impact of publications have become progressively valued, demanded and prioritized. This is more so in recent times. Similarly, the platforms for publications have attracted high scrutiny, relevance and value in the assessment, acceptance and dissemination of the research work itself. Indicators have shown that over time, publications progressively rely on the quality, depth and field of its presentation for acceptance, value and relevance in academia. Publication for its sake is no longer tenable and efforts must be made to determine the most acceptable means and context of a publication to ensure its veracity, fidelity, acceptance and worth in the field of academia. Underlying every publication, therefore, is the latent notion and interest to weigh the publication by the relative standing of the publishers, the quality and content of the publication. The weighting factors have been progressively pursued in recent times, constraining writers to make their publishing choices carefully. We, be that as it may, the academia is inundated with different publications of varying qualities, relevance, value and significance. While many publications are in the form of books, monographs, journals, electronic slides, virtual works, etc., tertiary institutions have made specific demand for and profiled journals as the highest platform for the publication of high-quality scholarly works for scientific impact. This is necessitated by the publication process, which insists on peer review and second opinion on works published in them. The journal as a field of publication is therefore accepted as the tertiary, at the tertiary level of education and research dissemination as reliable and valued for the quality of the research findings documented in them. Institutions of the world have thus accepted journal publications as peer-reviewed documents that provide quality research and scientific findings. The process is assumed to be or should be scientific and reliable. As part of the global collective, Institutions in Nigeria place high premium on journals and their publications as the veritable means of accessing relevant knowledge in different disciplines. While other publications cited earlier are accepted in the teaching and learning processes, journals are evidently valued and highly regarded owing to the peer review publication process. The quality, fidelity and veracity of the peer review process may not be optimal in some instances, but it is assumed to be employed in journal publications. Prior to the 1960s, higher education was not formally established in many in Nigeria. Many tertiary educated Nigerians studied in the Western countries. This constrained earlier writers and research 
our researchers from Nigeria to depend solely on international institutions for the dissemination of their research findings. Indeed, many of such writers made use of available platforms in their various study institutions and locations. It was not until the 1960s when Nigeria gained independence did we have an autonomous and indigenous University of Nigeria at Nsoka, which provided greater opportunities for many locals to access higher education on a larger scale in Nigeria. Before this, however, University College at Ibado had given opportunity to some to access higher education, but not at the scale at the University of Nigeria. Many other universities were established in quick succession in Nigeria, giving rise to over 70 universities in the country today. The increase, the increase in the number of universities, colleges of education and polytechnics brought about an increase in research and scholarship with corresponding increase in journal publications in the country. Side by side, the national or local journals that were in place are the journals outside the country. Nigerian scholars have continued to seek for opportunities to publish in journals within and outside Nigeria. Without equivocation, Nigerian writers and researchers took advantage of the various platforms for the dissemination of their research activities. For about 60 years, Nigerian researchers have made valuable contributions to various journal publications including music journals. Although music journals were not published on a large scale in the country, many music researchers and scholars did not relent in the dissemination of their research findings within and outside the country through available music journals. Up till the present, there is still a death of music journals in Nigeria, which is a reflection of the general standing of the discipline in the country. Writers were enthused, motivated, and valued the need to make valuable contributions to various international music journals. This could be said to be partly motivated by the lack of music journals in the country. It may be surprising to note that Nigeria has not had more than six music journals at any given time. The list includes the Journal of the Association of Nigerian Musicologists, which is the journal of our national association, Journal of the Conference of Nigerian Music Educators, Nigerian Music Review, Oka Journal of Research in Music and the Arts, Nsuka Journal of Musical Arts Research, and Obodom Journal of Music. Some of these are not in regular circulation, while some have not been published in the past five years. Before the year 2010, Nigerian music scholars enjoyed the privilege of free contributions of articles to various journals around the globe, based on the quality and need for their works without any fear of exclusion based on, on the geographical locations of the writers, their institutions standing of the institutions, the institutions standing on global ranking, prejudice and bias regarding or on the notion that they have not adopted certain prescribed methods, language, technical formats, etc. Writers were encouraged to submit and publish their works without any insinuations of lack of research expertise, but based on the veracity of the information contained in their works. Articles were not assessed from a narrow lens of prescribed editorial or journal norm, which excluded more than they encouraged fair and equal participation. The notion and dichotomy between the global north and south was not experienced by writers. Gatekeeping was unknown to them. Music journals did not force down the demand for theories in the social sciences and pure sciences on writers. Indeed, coverage of journal, indeed, accommodation of works from different locations was prioritized to ensure equitable and fair coverage of the journals. Up till 2010, this situation was maintained and many Nigerian music researchers achieved international standing based on their research and scholarship output published in many journals outside Nigeria, such as Black Perspective in Music, African Music, Ye Book of International Council for Traditional Music, British Journal of Music Education, International Journal of Music Education, Ethnomusicology, etc. Many Nigerian writers also had their books and book chapters published under the sponsorship of, in of institutions outside the country. There was balance in the publications of articles and works from Nigerian or African music researchers. Some of such writers are Felasha Wande, William Weberforce Chupudinka Echezona, Samuel Ababot, Lazarus Ekweme, Mekin Zewi, Akeniuba, 
Joshua Uzigwe, Bodeo Mojola, etc. Many of the older generation of Nigerian scholars obtained their higher degrees from institutions outside Nigeria. This fueled the desire to maintain relationships with such institutions through article publications in the institution's journals. However, in the last 10 years, there has been a noticeable shift in interest and attention to submissions from, for publication from writers from Africa and Nigeria by international journals. The notion of Global North as the bastion of knowledge and the Global South as the sanctuary of weak scholars became a norm and underlie the activities of international journals in Europe, America and Australia. At least, this is reflected in the way submissions from scholars are treated, most often with condescension. The assumption is that a writer from the Global South must prove himself or herself beyond reasonable doubt before his or her writings may be accommodated. It is taken for granted ab initio that they do not possess the intellectual strength to engage in serious research and scholarship. In fact, it is assumed that one must have, must have higher degree training from institutions in the global north to be admitted into the knowledge fold. Institutions and institutional affiliations or institutions of training have become gate openers for writers in Africa. Gatekeeping has been put in place to weed out works from some geographical areas, or at least give them thorough screening to justify their acceptance. Most high-impact journals put in place editorial policies that are quite exclusionary and constrain writers schooled in the pure music art to take up studies in the social science sciences or pure sciences to learn the required theories for writing for such journals. Language and local concepts became critical issues in various reviews, existence of some of the less understood local concepts could lead to rejection of manuscripts. Language style is also taken seriously. Quite critical is the perception that music cannot be discussed in isolation. It requires to be tied to or rely on theories in the sciences to find its bearing. It becomes very difficult to appreciate the direction the music discipline is taking in contemporary research and scholarship. The first action most of the time is to reject papers that do not meet the stereotype requirements even before they are before they have the chance of review. Indeed, high impact music journals have ignited the colonial tendency in which anything not conforming or not in agreement with the norms and values developed in the West is rejected and considered to be of no value. This raises the question of impact. One may ask, impact to whom? Does impact rely on the West for its determination? The stance of high impact international journals has induced intellectual and scholarship colonization of Nigeria and African academia. Scholars are constrained to adopt and adapt to the requirements of such journals to the detriment of the local journals and knowledge. Frustrations and emotional bias accompany attempts to publish are better imagined in recent times. This constrained this panel to appraise the status quo for obvious reasons. Notions around high impact journal publication processes need critical review to decolonize excluding certain cultural locations as well as gatekeeping for maintenance of Western norms and processes amounts to neocolonization and approaches to scholarship that destroy more than they build. It is crucial to this panel to draw attention to this trend that seems to be more destructive to music research and scholarship in Nigeria than it has supported it. With poor funding and no institutional support, no music journal in Nigeria has developed to be ranked as a high-impact international journal. At the same time, the ex exclusionary stand of international music journals tilted in favor of the social sciences and the pure sciences has denied the Nigerian scholars the opportunity to disseminate their research findings internationally. This is the crux of the panel's discussion. Decolonization is perforce. Thank you. Historical background of music journal publishing in Nigeria. Operators of music journal publishing in Nigeria. Since the beginning of music journal publishing in Nigeria, music journals are operated by tertiary institutions and music 
associations whose activities border on and around music, musical research, and the related arts. Notable tertiary institutions in Nigeria and music associations include University of Nigeria and Suka, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Nandi Ezekiwe University, Oka, University of Uyu, Delta State University, Abraka, University of Ilorin, Avaniko College of Education, Oweri, Association of Nigerian Musicologists, ANIM, and Society of Music Educators in Nigeria, SUMEN. The practice of music journal publishing by these institutions and bodies have provided useful outlets for the documentation and preservation of research in music and related arts over the years. The effort has significantly impacted and revolutionized the Nigeria's music scene in all ramifications of music compositions, performance, education, ethnomusicology, therapy, psychology, mass media, and business. Origin of music research publishing in Nigeria. Music research publishing started in Nigeria in 1965 with the publication of Music in Nigeria, a proceeding of a music seminar. The initiative for this publication was born out of the proceedings of the African Music Seminar held in the Department of Music, University of Nigeria and Suka in May 1965. The theme of the seminar was the development of a national tradition of music. The work the working sessions of this seminar we are devoted to preparing detailed syllabi for varying levels of music education in Nigeria. The contributors to this maiden edition music publication are Dr. Percy Young, Dr. Mrs. Edna M. Edith, Mr. Anthony King, and Fela Shawande. That's the front view of the Department of Music where the first uh, uh, music research publishing happened. And then we have the front view of music in Nigeria, which was the first publication in the Nigerian institutions and associations. Impact of the Civil War in music journal publishing in Nigeria. During and after the Civil War, during and after the Civil War, the existing higher institutions in Nigeria, which were the University of Co Uni the University College at Ibadan and University of Nigeria and Suka witnessed a decline in institutional activities including teaching, research and publications across the disciplines. As a result, the impact of the Nigerian Civil War led to a halt in the furtherance of music publishing from 1965 to 1977. However, between 1970 and 1990, as university education and research publications declined on the account of the ordeals of the Nigerian Civil War, some Nigerian music scholars like Mekin Zewi, Lazarus Ikweme, Kofi Agawu, Joshua Uzigwe, and Akin Yuba focused the publications of their music research articles on international journals such as Journal of the International Library of African Music, Journal of the International Folk Music Council, Yearbook of the International Folk Music Council, The Black Perspectives in Music, African Music, Journal of the African Music Society, and Journal of the International African Institute. The, pub the published journals, The New Beginning, at, starting from the state of journal publishing in Nandi Azikiwe University, starting from the state of music journal publishing in Obafemili Awolo University, Ileife, in 1977, Music journal publishing started in Nigeria at Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, with the publication of Nigerian Music Review No. 1. The publication was initiated by Alvan, by Dr. Akin Yuba, who wanted to promote the Nigerian tradition of music. The Nigerian Music Review was aimed at disseminating original research on Nigerian traditional, popular, and art music. The publishing of this journal ceased at a point in the institution's history but was resuscitated in 2001 by Reverend Femi Adedeji. The circumstances that affected the progress of the journal bordered on and around the issues of change in administration, lack of manuscripts, and lack of funding. But in 2001, the journal became revived into what is presently known as Nigerian Christian Music Guide Journal, with Femi Adedeji as the editor. And published till 2006. The state of 
Music Journal Publishing in Nandi Azikiwe University, Oka. The Department of Music in Nandi Azikiwe University, Oka began the publication of Oka Journal of Research in Music and the Arts, AJRMA, in 2004. AJRMA was born out of the initiative of Dr. Emeka Mbanuku, who saw the need for more home-based journal publication in music. The journal welcomes contribution of any sort directed at increasing scientific, cultural, and educational understanding of any aspect of music, such as music pedagogy, music technology, music composition and analysis, dance and theater, ethnomusicology, and historical musicology. Also, it aims it aimed at adding a Nigerian voice to global music arts discussion, as well as lending a helping hand to Nigerian scholars who needed to publish their research, their research works, but were unable to link up with the international journals of the time. Issues of finance and managerial politics have posed major challenges to the sustenance of this journal. However, the management of AJRMA has ensured an interrupted annual publication of this journal since its inception. Between 2004 and 2020, the management has published a total of 14 volumes of AJRMA and the 15th volume is a work in progress to be published before the end of 2021. AJRMA has made substantial contributions since the inception of music journal publishing in Nigeria in 1977. State of Music Journal Publishing in the Society of Music Educators in Nigeria, SUMEN. The Journal of Nigerian Music Edu Education, JNME, is published by the Conference of Music Educators in Nigeria, Komen, presently known as the Society of Music Educators in Nigeria, SUMEN. Komen is an academic and professional music association established in 1999 for the development of music education in Nigeria at all levels. JNME is published with the objective of disseminating research findings, reports, and updated information on music, teaching, learning, and to promote scholarship in Nigerian music education generally. State of uh, Music Journal Publishing in the Association of Nigerian Musicologists, ANIM. The Association of Nigerian Musicologists, ANIM, began its publication of Journal of the Association of Nigerian Musicologists, JANIM, in 2005 with the proceedings of the manuscripts presented in the occasion of her fourth conference in the University of Benin, Edo State, in 2005. However, the association published her first academic manuscript obtained from her maiden conference in the University of Illawarra, Quara State as a book entitled Music and Social Dynamics in 1993. Each volume of Janin varies in objective which depends on the theme of the conference from which articles we are retrieved and accepted for publication in the journal. Anim has been consistent with the annual publication of Janim since 2005. So far, Anim has published 14 volumes of her journal and the 15th volume is a work in progress. A State of Music Journal Publishing in University of Uyo, Akwaibom State. The State of Music the Department of Music, University of Uyo, Akwaibom State, conceived the idea of music journal publishing in 2009 during the headship of Dr. Anie D. Eba. In 2011, the institution published the maiden edition of a journal entitled Obodon, Journal of Music and the Aesthetics, Ojoma. Ojoma asserts manuscripts that are but not limited to theoretical and empirical research in the theory and practice of music and the related arts humanities social sciences language history architecture environmental science literature and sociology this journal was designed to pub to be published twice in a year but due to several truncations in the activities of the nigerian universities over the years the institution has published only five volumes of this journal, with the fifth ed edition published in July 2020. State of Music Journal Publishing in, in University of Nigeria and Suka. In 2012, the Department of Music, University of Nigeria and Suka published the maiden volume of Nsuka Journal, the, the Nsuka Journal of Musical Arts Research and Research from the proceedings of the first biennial conference of the National Conference of Music and Performing Arts, NACOMPA. The theme of the conference centered on contemporary issues on Nigerian sociocultural integrity. NJMAR was a giant 
feats achieved by the Department of Music UNN and the University in general as it marked the beginning of music journal publishing in the University of Nigeria after five decades from the last publication in 1965. This journal is a peer-reviewed journal that aims to combine ethnomusicological, musicological music education, technological and performance-based research in a unique way to promote the musical arts of Nigeria and Africa. The journal aims to increase the scientific understanding of all aspects of music and the related arts. It encourages broad-based research in all aspects of musical arts, both from the musical perspective and from the perspective of other related disciplines. This include listening, performing, creating, analyzing, learning and teaching, as well as applied social, developmental, attitudinal and therapeutic studies. Presently, the Department of Music UNN has published four volumes of NJMR within one decade of its existence, and the fifth volume is a work in progress. In conclusion, generally, the impact and survival of music journal, journal publishing in Nigeria are challenged by lack of regular supply of manuscripts, institutional policies, lack of funding for quality research and the overall running of music journals. By implication, many music journals have collapsed after a few years of their existence. However, few Nigerian tertiary institutions and music associations maintain their composure in strategizing on the most effective approach to sustain, improve and promote music journal publishing in Nigeria, ensuring that music scholarship in Nigeria continues to impact the overall Nigerian music industry. Furthermore, the internet technology promises opportunities for the existing Nigerian music journals to secure presence in the global space for improved readership and global ranking. Thank you. Background. Academic institutions across the globe adopt the use of quality and quantity of research work published by scholars in both local and foreign journals to appraise their career progression. This has, in no small measure, brought about the slogan of publish or perish syndrome, which simply means that you either publish or perish in the scholarly world. According to this, cited in Ola 2015, the promotion and assessment mechanism in, uh, in the academic field has created a publish or perish culture by placing a high premium on works published in certain journals and mostly foreign. Many scholars believe that the only way to publish and not perish is to focus on and tie their research publications to foreign journals. Fundamentally, research is an important aspect of life which can equally be referred to as scholarship. Over the years, scholars in Africa and Nigeria have been publishing their research output either in the local or foreign journals. In most of these journals, the quality and volume of papers published varies. As a result of this, academic departments, research centers, and uh, foreign bodies are increasingly interested in assessing the quality of research production of individuals, individual research outcome. Many scholars, especially in Nigeria, believe that for any publication to be accepted, as high impact, it must be published in a foreign journal, which it must be in a foreign journal, which must be published in a foreign journal. Why research works published in local journals are often underrated. This idea has totally been embraced since it is pathway to promotion. Promotion. This brings the issue of high impact journal. We asked, what is high impact journal? There is no universal accepted definition of high impact journal, except that it has general principle. According to now 2020, a high impact journal is one where its articles are regularly cited across the academic spectrum. He went further to state that citation index were first developed in 1950s, which is the means of measuring the impact factor any journal can have. He noted that Thomson Reuters, the first institution of scientific 
information isi web of knowledge that conducted this indexing through the annual journal citation report jcr journal journal citation report is presently linked to a newer form called the clarivate analytics impact factor after the last edition of the book clarivate Anal analytical impact factor simago journal rank which is a subdivision of scopus rose and became more popular though the format and function of the thomson reuters and simago are believed to also be similar it was noted that journal jcr of clarivate analytics has both scientific and social science edition that helps in providing discipline specific uh, specific list of journals by detailing the impact factor and the other information on how an average article is cited quickly and the rate of the citation, uh, uh, counting citation of the journal. More literatures reveal that impact factor was invited, invented by Eugenia Goldfield, Eugenia Goldfield Institution for Scientific Information. Thompson Corporation noted that the main impact factor or journal impact factor of an academic journal is a scientometric index calculated by Clarivet that reflects the yearly average number of citations that at that article published in the last two years of a given journal journal received. Journal received. Again, there are frequent used as a proxy, proxy for the relative importance of a journal within its field. Journals with high impact are often deemed to be more important or carry more interesting prestige in their respective field than those with lower value. We go to the implication of in, uh, impact journal, high impact journal to as scholars. Indeed, the implication of this is enormous, as Africa is already colonized in the world of scholarship. Nigerian scholars today depends on what the Global North calls high impact journal, without considering the peculiar nature of the African environment in the area of development. This has led to high rate of rejection whenever they send in their papers in foreign journals. So there's need to know who do Nigerian publish for or Africa. According to National University Commission, they noted Nigeria has a large number of high educational institutions, both public and private, as well as research institutions. With this, it is expected that there should be a high number of research publications that could also have high impact. It is noted that journal publication output could be done in two ways, which is either published in local or journal, as stated by Gideon, Gideon cited in Ola 2015, that the choice of where to publish often determines accessibility, visibility, impact, and the utility of the work. Today, most works published in Nigeria local journals so far low global and local visibility because they are yet to be digitalized. So the implication of impact, fact, impact journal to Nigerian scholars can be seen in the lack of impact, uh, lack of impact and visibility which affect promotion and appraisal of scholars. Also, Davis argued that promotion and assessment mechanism in the academic field has also created the culture of placing a high premium on works published within certain journals, most of which are foreign-based journals. Many Nigerian scholars depend on these foreign journals publication to make their research work visible. Sadly, these journal publications are assessed by foreign scholars who do not have any contact with the researcher, a research environment. Their judgment is usually based on the extent, stand, extent standard the editors, particularly journal, have of the particular journal have set. And once research work meets their requirements, these foreign journals go ahead to publish same whether it contributes to the development of researchers environment or not this has made the nigerian scholars to focus their research on the rules set by foreign journals rather than how it can benefit and improve the uh, nigerian and african society contributed the contribute the contribution to the world majority of the journal local journals are not 
digitalized. That is the second one. And therefore, unaccessible. One of the reasons for this is lack of funding. The inability to access these high-impact journals due to subscription requirements has restricted many scholars from accessing good journal uh, resources as a result of high cost of subscription. Furthermore, most people in the global north have access to peer-reviewed journal articles through their institution, which are able to offer subscription fees, while those within the global south have not. It is important to note that the inability of virtual or universities and research institutions to keep up with high subscription fees has necessitated cancellations, thereby reducing access, access to peer review journal, journal articles in Nigeria today. The issue of accessibility has remained also one of the major challenges to Nigerian scholars due to high cost of subscription. It's also instructive to note that before now, journal publications have existed in Nigeria for many years. But due to corruption and lack of funding, those, co those uh, journals have died off in Nigeria. Unfortunately, over time, these journals, as I stated before, their visibility have declined as a result of this disfigured economy in Nigeria. The educational sector has also witnessed brain drain syndrome. This is another factor because when you, are, you keep on co publishing in foreign journals, it means that people will leave the country. Then, lastly, in conclusion, we ask the question, what has high impacts set to address? It is the need of society or scholars and promotion of scholars. It is, may, it is important to note that scholars in the global north will continue to have access to peer-reviewed journals articles through their institution which are able to afford subscription fee why those within the global south will not have access so in nigeria today the issue of accessibility has been a major challenge therefore it must be addressed due to the address and this can only be done by government thank you challenges of high impact journals on nigerian scholars Contemporary Nigerian scholars contend with a myriad of challenges as they try to publish in international high-impact journals. Nigerian scholars face the possibility of frequent rejection of their manuscripts by publishers of high-impact journals. Among other reasons given for such rejections are poor language and writing styles that do not conform with or measure up to the standard needed for publications in high-impact journals. Other challenges include weak research evidence, theoretical underpinnings, and the recent global North and South dichotomy. However, it is important to note that the mindset of a decision-maker could influence or determine the final outcome or may affect the final judgment of a review process in specific cases. The assessors of manuscripts for a journal determine the acceptable submissions that meet the requirements for publications. There is a possibility that sometimes an assessor could be biased. This bias may come as a result of many factors that may include issues of geographical location or institutional affiliations of authors. Whatever the case, there is a growing perception or feeling of exclusion resulting from frequent rejections of manuscripts from countries of sub-Saharan Africa, including Nigeria. Being a developing country, most editors or assessors see manuscripts from see manuscript coming from Nigerian scholars as substandard. Hence, most research outputs from Nigerian scholars do not scale through for publication in high-impact journals. This challenge necessitates the clarification of underlying factors that constrain Nigerian scholars. There are differences in relevant theories that apply to Nigeria and the global north. Many studies in Nigeria are community-based. 
The output usually reflects our environment, especially in the humanities. In many of the journals, however, Nigerian scholars are required to root their studies on theories and literatures developed in the global north. This requirement has become the norm and determines whether or not manuscripts would find space or spaces for publication in international high impact journals. These differences in theories from literatures also make collaboration between global North scholars and those from the South difficult owing to the disparity in cultural and social relevance. The emphasis on these theories, which may not have immediate application in social contexts outside of their origin, results in denial of access for inclusion against the global South scholars in many instances. So the dominant discourse is the difference in standards of scholarly outputs. Lack of funding, including institutional funding, is a great challenge to the Nigerian scholar. The libraries in our institutions, for instance, are not well funded to acquire current books and other research materials needed to produce high quality articles for such high impact journals. Many scholars in Nigeria struggle with self-sponsorship for research engagements from mega salaries. This constrains meaningful and result-oriented research. Subscriptions to international journals or books are very difficult for Nigerian scholars due to the financial involvements. The inability to pay the required subscription fees discourages the average Nigerian scholar from assessing such materials, thereby causing a decline in the rate of production of quality research articles. Lack of funds and sponsorship also limits the Nigerian scholars' attendance to international conferences. These conferences, which help to broaden the knowledge of participants, also serve as training opportunities. As scholars from different educational institutions and environments interact with one another. Hence, lack of such opportunities has limited the Nigerian scholar from benefiting from such avenues for further training, especially as regards the intricacies of writing standard for globally accepted articles required for high impact journal publications. The inadequacy of other facilities such as internet access greatly impedes the research outputs of Nigerian scholars. This also affects digitalization and visibility of our local contents, as majority of our scholarly outputs are yet to be digitalized as obtainable in the Western institutions. Most African or Nigerian research works or journals are not seen as global. The Global North journals are preferred and highly promoted, even by Nigerians. This is evident in some Nigerian universities as they compel their lecturers to publish in the international high impact journals before they can be promoted. This has drastically reduced the frequency of local journal publications in Nigeria. Consequently, the Nigerian scholar lacks avenue for the dissemination of research works which reflect Nigerian environment. It also hinders continuous submission of researched materials to local journals and subsequent corrections, which are expected to improve future research outputs of the Nigerian scholar. This inadequate representation of Global South journals is also greatly hindered by lack of institutional and national support for researchers and outlets for scholarly materials. Most Nigerian institutions don't sponsor research works. There are also too many and difficult hurdles in getting foreign grants. The proposal writings are fashioned in such a way that only those in the sciences are favored mostly in international grants. So the environment for publication in Nigeria differs greatly in comparison to the global north. Research facilities, tools are not provided. A lot of data are available, but there is great challenge in analyzing these data due to lack of appropriate facilities to do so, unlike in the global north, 
where all these are regulated and are well funded. Grants are also not available, as in the case of Global North. Most scholars in Nigeria pay from their pockets to carry out researches. In order to cope with this situation, most of them engage in secondary support programs, such as adjunct jobs. These multiple positions in institutions as a result of poor income seriously affect their outputs, thus resulting in scanty and substandard repre representations in journals. All this affects the rate of frequency of publishing and subsequent dissemination of quality research outputs from Nigerian scholars. Hence, adequate and enabling environment, which is lacking in Nigeria, is a great factor which affects Nigerian scholarly research outputs and visibility. These pieces of evidence are required to clarify the research and scholarship condition in which a typical Nigerian writer operates, operates in and why it seems that many are not measuring up to the required standard. Thank you. Recommendations on decolonization of high impact journal. With the challenge of lack of interest and attention to submissions from writers from Africa and Nigeria by international journals, we note that the importance of publishing African scholars lies in their foregrounding Africa as a starting point for interrogating existing knowledges and developing new insights into major global and local challenges of sustainable development goals. African scholars must not be isolated because their knowledge contributes a critical part to the whole global system. In the case of assessor's subjective mindset and exclusionary editorial policies that constrain Nigerian music scholars, we recommend that high-impact music journals should be more objective and inclusive when gatekeeping and reviewing articles from certain cultural locations, particularly in Nigeria. Furthermore, local phenomenon must be seen as a part of the whole global theories. Each manuscript should be judged on its own individual merit rather than lumping articles together and judging them collectively. Accuracy, reliability, reception and value in the academic circles should be emphasized when assessing submissions from Africa and Nigeria. In the case of lack of uh, challenges of a lack of infrastructure and quality, there is a need for an accommodating platform for Nigerian scholars. This should be done within appropriate scholarly practices that may include partnership between established journals in the West and evolving music journals in Nigeria. A journal training in which associate editors be assigned to work with selected Nigerian music journals to ensure their quality development. B. Such partnership would ensure technical support and rigorous review processes for the routine publications. Furthermore, this will ensure competitive standing of the journal through enhanced and quality manuscript submissions. It will be good to grant permission for the development of alternative ICTM journals targeting good submissions that might not have met Western international processes and theories. Some of the ways inadequate research funding and facilities can be addressed will include the ICTM to accommodate hosting selected institutional African or Nigerian journals on their website, targeting certain research areas, to have special training or grant programs geared towards development of research, language skills, and whatever they think will help. And finally, for ICTM to support a web page for registered members from Nigeria where they can access certain music journals, including those 
that are protected. Thanks for listening. All right. Okay, so um, we will welcome comments or questions, please. Let me let me clarify something. I, I think um, our presentation is on a critical issue that is affecting all of us down in Nigeria and in many countries in Africa. I may not necessarily contain, you know, uh, uh, videos and other things, but it's something very serious to us. And we raise this matter because so many uh, Nigerian writers, particularly in music, have had challenges you know, publishing their works. Because of some of these issues we've highlighted, it's much more than this, but we have to, we have to highlight a couple of things so as to guide the discussion. So we are sure that the issues raised in our context may not necessarily be what operates in many other places, but we wanted to bring this to the knowledge of everybody so we can like within the context of the recommendations made, find opportunities and ways to address these mountain challenges because we have our own individual uh, experiences and examples, particularly myself, having been in the discipline for a long time, I've had issues. Maybe when appropriate questions are asked, I can you know, uh, share them and then find out uh, what may be suggested because we were really in need of attention to this fact. Yeah, I think Cathy, okay, thank you, Christian. Uh, Cathy wants to speak. Please, you have the floor. Your, the volume is low for you. For you. Oh. Yeah, it, it, I've, I've turned it all the way up. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, please go ahead. I can hear you. I'm sorry about this technique. Um, yeah. uh -huh. So I, I wanted to congratulate um, all of the presenters, um, not only for what, what you've said, um, but for the courage. And, um, you. and I think that um, what I need to say, at least off the top, is as the editor of the Europe for traditional music. Can you hear anything? Hello, this is uh, Carlos, the host. Uh, Kati, perhaps yes, we cannot hear you. Perhaps you can type the message you want to say, or unless it's very long. She says it's very long. Can you try again, please? and maybe louder. Okay, um, we, we still can't hear you. Samuel, please, uh, I can see your hand is raised. Please, can you unmute yourself and speak? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the whole panel for this wonderful uh, exposition of, you know, uh, an enormously important uh, uh, issue worldwide, I think. And I would just like to, to comment on Christian's last comment and uh, just to add uh, an, another perspective to it. He was concerned with clarifying that uh, some of the issues raised from an African dash Nigerian perspective could or could not affect other uh, parts of the world scholars in other parts of the world. And I, I would like to contribute saying that once I, I was asked to, to, to teach a course at the University of Chicago, and I used a text by uh, North American writers that people uh, in an ethnomusicology program there didn't know about. So this gatekeeping can be predatory and can be sort of impeditive within the global north too, you know, depending on the issues which are treated. Uh, in this case, for instance, uh, this literature dealt with uh, uh, 
disturbances in, uh, pro and protests in the North American, African American neighborhood. And these were sort of non-issues by the time uh, this, uh, this course happened at the University of Chicago. Nowadays, this is the issue within the Society for Ethnomusicology as a whole, right? One present, president resigned from the presidency of the society due uh, to alleged misconduct in face of Black Lives Matter. So uh, what the point I'm making is that this gatekeeping can be very impeditive and non-scholarly, so, so to speak, in the global north as well. Thank you to the whole panel for this, uh, all, all the wonderful suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samuel, for your contribution. So we welcome more contributions, no questions. Please, if you have a question, go ahead and mute yourself or a response, a comment to make, please go ahead and mute yourselves and let's hear you. Can I say something more? Yes, please. Please go right. ahead. You see, I wanted to reserve very critical experience. I have experienced it because there are two occasions that actually yeah. you serve part of the background to what we are doing right now. So as to give it mm -hmm. some some strength to know that it's actually happening, not that we are imagining that it could happen. I remember around 2009 or thereabout, I sent out a paper to a Black Music Research Journal. And after the reviews, it returned to me for me to make the relevant corrections suggested by the reviewers and return the, you know, uh, the article which was okay for me, it was quite okay. I was happy. I went on, reviewed, revised, and made all the corrections and sent back the papers. And then I received a letter from, or a communication from the journal to telling me that they are no longer eager or inclined to publish in the article. And that was it. There was no reason. And why I wondered <laughs> if, whether it was just because it came from from here. A most recent one happened. I sent out an, an article to a journal in the, in the far, in the UK, British area or something. And yeah. as always, the reviewers finished with the reviews and sent back the comments for me to work on, worked on them brilliantly and sent back. And they said, the editor wrote back to say, ah, that's okay, very minor things now left. And that I should see the remaining minor things to be done below. And nothing was attached, nothing was included for me to, to work on. You know, I wrote this editor more than 10 emails asking for what is there to be done as, as stated in the mail sent to me. And nothing was said. He never replied. And after about the 10th email, he wrote back to say he was in, away or whatever, and that somebody sent, you know, copied the email, the email to one of his uh, colleagues or something to say, look into this matter. And I took it as in a green light to have some answers. I started writing that person and no response. I wrote the editor again severally, no response. Meanwhile, they gave me up to 19th February this year to revise and send back the article with the minor corrections to be made or something. So I just, at a point I got frustrated, sometime in January, I got frustrated. I said, well, let me wait. Perhaps by February, they will write me a notification to warn me that they were waiting for my, in my sub resubmission. I waited till we got into February, February 2nd, 3rd, up to 10th, up to 19th, no communication from them till today I'm sitting here. There's no communication, no contact to say you didn't resubmit the article or what happened. And I say to myself, this is a great insult. In fact, I said I, I was pushed to write the editor to ask him whether this happens in a civilized world, in a, in a sane society, 
in a place where you respect scholars, at least you take the liberty or the, the opportunity to say, sorry, this is the situation, or you do this or do that. Till today, no communication. And I asked if it was a colleague from Oxford University, uh, Cambridge University, uh, whatever university, would he behave like that? Would that editor treat that person like that? It wouldn't. Okay. This is All right. just a few. Sorry. What else are there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Christian. Well, we are having some questions and responses. From Kim, there have been a lot of issues with gatekeeping in the U.S., Journals often contact scholars in the U.S. who have not read non-U.S. scholars on topics, and they exercise gatekeeping in an insidious way. In an insidious way, so that is from uh, Kim. Um, and then we'll we're going to take the next. Uh, well, I don't know whether you would have a response for that, or we go straight to take uh, Emmanuel. Mujuru, he says, I would want to contribute. So, Emmanuel, please go ahead. Um, tell us if you can unmute him. That would be wonderful so that he can contribute. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for those presentations. Um, I, I would want to actually say that those presentations were maybe <clears throat> some of the best that I've, I've listened to um, on uh, decolonization. Um, anything that is to do with decolonization and, and, and our arts, music and dance and stuff like that. Um, because I've realized that most of the times we are concentrating on weaponization of decolonization narratives instead of working on issues that are um, academic and um, empowering. Uh, coming to the issue of how to resolve these problems that we are facing, I think that's the most important thing more than complaining. Um, I, I think our major issue is to do with our economies, obviously. Most of us um, are getting scholarships from the West uh, to study, to carry out these studies. I'm, I'm glad um, Nigeria actually has got a number of um, uh, options because they, they've come up with their own journals and, and stuff like that. But in other countries, it's, it's even worse. We, we, don't, we haven't even made an attempt to do that. Um, we need to create alternatives. The world now, especially the Western world or the, the Northern um, Hemisphere is actually depending on these days. It's now it's actually depending on uh, knowledge economies. They are making huge sums of money uh, from our contributions um, through the use of, or for the use of, of the, um, the, the latest technologies they've developed. If, if I was to ask you right now how much we've spent already to, to be online to do this, um, just this um, seminar we, we are just having now, and, and where that money is going, you notice that all the money is going to the north. So what is important is to develop our systems just as we are trying to develop our mining, our whatever in Africa. What creates money or value is demand. You know, diamond is just a stone. It's a useless thing. I mean, if you had to think of it deeply, but because someone placed the value on it through demand, I mean, right? It became so precious that Economies, empires are built on diamond. So what you're saying is we've got, we are actually a, a gold mine in terms of knowledge in Africa. And that knowledge is being taken by people, by, by the Northern Hemisphere and turned into value. They put it on, on um, they shoot videos and, and they put them up. Some of them, some of the information is not even correct. They upload it, they write, uh, um, okay, in their journals, they do that, and they create value out of that. Then we go there and download the videos, we download the books. I'm from Africa and I'm downloading from Africa, I'm paying through my nose for that information. And, and they keep on getting money. Why? Because they invested. How did they invest? 
They even pay for our scholarships. You can imagine how many Africans are receiving scholarships in Europe, in, in America. Um, and, and whilst our governments are not able to do anything about us. So it's like if we don't invest in ourselves, we are not going anywhere. We've got the ideas, we've got the knowledge, but we're in not investing in that knowledge. So um, they'll keep on doing this gatekeeping because it improves their economies. Right now, there isn't much production um, to talk about in other areas. For example, UK is depending more on, on finances. The economy is based more on finances and this knowledge systems, and we pay through our noses for that. So all I'm trying to say is, Let's develop ourselves. Let's encourage our governments to, to issue out scholarships to our students so that we create demand for our knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that contribution, um, Emmanuel. Uh, so now uh, we, have, we have from Katsi, she has, she has now been able to write something. So she, I'll just read out what she has written. I'm sorry that you can't hear me. I'm very grateful for the presentations today and the recommendations made. There are many things I want to say as a former gatekeeper. May I add a suggestion to your recommendations, Dr. Fortune? In 2017, I created the first editorial board for the yearbook for traditional music that has, or at least had broad representation, please reach out to them and let them know your concerns and give them your recommendations. Perhaps they help release the editor of that journal, but think of other journals too, that release the editor from imposing Western, West, Western-centric standards. There's much more I'd like to say Thank you for your courage in speaking up today. Well done. Thank you, Kathy. That's well received. Then from Sui Bank, uh, she has a question. I have a question. So please go ahead, Sui Bank. <laughs> Let's hear yeah, you. I'm you sorry if much. I mispronounce your name. Please no, no, bear with correct. me. Thank you very much uh, to welcome. all of you all for this uh, wonderful presentation. And I, I, feel, I feel very much for, uh, for all of you all because um, in Southeast Asia, we also experience uh, um, you know, difficulties in getting published in um, journals, uh, high impact journals. And I think that um, it is important uh, for us to actually find out and um, tell you know, people what are the differences you know, in the writing style or, you know, what, what is the difference between like um, uh, writing and doing research in uh, Africa and Nigeria and other parts of the world? So just let me give you, give you an example. Like in Southeast Asia, uh, many, many scholars uh, do very in-depth research and um, they do thick descriptions on uh, particular forms uh, or genres of music and the performing arts. So for the, for the high impact journals, um, the editors do not consider this uh, worthy of publication because they do not have specific arguments, right? Uh, or they don't have specific uh, theoretical uh, um, uh, you know, uh, th theory behind uh, what, what is written. So I, th I think that um, we, we in Southeast Asia have already uh, made this point very clear. And, um, you know, in, in the, the recent uh, uh, yearbook for traditional music, we, we have um, uh, articles that are from Asia that are very descriptive and don't have, you know, like uh, theory from the West. So um, uh, my, my question is, you know, what exactly is the difference between writing uh, about, you know, um, the arts in Africa and in Nigeria and other parts of the world? So if we know this, then, you know, we can actually look out for um, art, uh, people who are writing from Africa 
and um, you know we 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 will know how to assess them. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that uh, question. Now I'll give you uh, an example of uh, a theory that is based in Nigeria or in Africa that uh, didn't get attention. I remember I was writing to a feminist journal with uh, in relationship to music, how music empowers the women. And I used an African theory, snail sense theory, which talks about the African snail. That was the, the, my theoretical base. And the journal was outrightly rejected. And I was asked to use uh, proper theory, theoretical orientation. So this is one instance, you know, so that we, we restrict ourselves to the Western theories and forget about our own, which actually reflects our environment and has impact in our environment. So I hope uh, that throws more light on your question. I don't know if anybody would like to uh, comment further on this. Let me, let me add something to your, what you uh, presented. Our problem most times is lack of understanding from reviewers. Most times when you send a paper or a manuscript to some of these Global North or general, you know, high impact journals, they already have a body of reviewers who are specialists in their fields and not well connected to what happens in Africa or you know, having not researched or studied from the African perspective. And so what happens, first of all, is that they begin to look at what is before them based on what they know. In fact, we have had a session with one of the important editors of one of the music journals, and he acknowledged this. That most of the time they pull from the their, their you know block of reviewers who immediately of course base their their uh, assessment on what they know generally and some very few of these journals go the extra mile of finding reviewers within the local context most of the time they are considered unqualified because perhaps they are not international they are not recognized they are not seen and so they may not be you know, considered for such reviews. So what happens in most times is you have maybe one or two reviewers who really have not much contact with Africa or with Nigeria or with the culture in question, who may not even understand so much about what is being done, not his or her fault, but because he has the duty to report back to the journal, he or she makes a conclusion and sends back and whatever is there is ignored and forgotten. And sometimes also, even the editor who serves as the major you know, gatekeeper looks at a manuscript submitted and of course concludes that this has not, will not make you know, exciting read for the, the, the target audience of the journal and therefore is set aside because almost all the journals have their target you know, or, uh, readers and institutions that you know, subscribe. And so once they see something that is coming from, from somewhere and which does not connect with you know, ongoing discussions or arguments or presentations already you know, happening in that context, they, they tend to look at it as something that will not really you know, uh, excite their readers. So these are the issues. So what we are saying is if there is a way to ab initio, find people who have such connection, who have such exposure to African you know, humanities or the arts to be able to go through some of, because you may be able to find a few who will understand what is happening. At the same time also, we, we may appeal to the uh, you know, journals, their editors to you know, take some time out to, to consider some of these things, not just as something that may not excite your readers, but you may also find out that your readers may be excited at the end of the day after reading them. So it's something that, that needs to be you know, uh, re reconsidered in some ways. You know, I don't want to speak so much because we know okay. it's happening in different ways. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Christian. We have more contributions uh, through messages from Solomon Guerevende. I hope, please pardon me if I mispronounce the names. 
Thanks to all the presenters for excellent presentations. I believe that the first challenge that African ethnomusicologists, musicologists and other social science scholars face is how to navigate academics engagement with research as a capitalistic endeavor. The impact of capitalism on the workings of academia and the research positioning of academics is rarely discussed, even though the network of capitalistic relations is transparent in, research, in researcher research contexts. Besides, scholarly research has been pitched as a capitalistic endeavor in which the focus is placed on the profit value of research outputs for institutional advancement. So what do you think should be done to deal with the problem of valuing research by the commodities that is data produced by their goodness of fit in the global research markets in the context of decolonization and the challenges that might be faced in the process? So this is a question I, that is brought up by Solomon. Can I say something there? Yeah, okay. please um, go ahead. You're welcome. Please go ahead. Unfortunately, many of these journals have created outlets for open access in which people pay. Some even provide services for language, editorship, and tutorial and so on. And all quite you know, are difficult for us. You pay in, in dollars. I, I saw one uh, uh, open access journal taking as much as $1,800 for an article. Some $1,500, some charge up to $400 for, you, for, for them to show you how to, or to edit your work. And like we have echoed, most of us, the internet access we're using for this session, we bought on our own, we paid for, it's not institutional. We, everything you do, you pay from the little. An average professor of music now is not earning up to $1,000 a month in Nigeria, presently. And imagine where you have to pay $1,800 for an article. Would that be possible to be able to meet the commodity, you know, uh, stand or the capitalism of these journals? Because that is what it has become. It means it's a franchise for making money and to force it down on, you know, particularly those from the weak, you know, assumed weak contexts, because it's either you pay or you get out. And there's no, in, in, in some of the arrangements, like the, the gold, you know, uh, uh, option, the institutions, you may ask your institutions to pay for you, and not many institutions talk to you here to pay for you to publish an article. In the, in some developed in the areas, they will, they will pay for their, you know, staff to publish their, their, their articles in open access. But this is not possible. So whether it is to be paid for or to be considered on its own merit, we still have that challenge. So whether we, we are asking that, you know, we're looking at it from the point that it is commodity, it has to be paid for. Yes, it may be commodity, but knowledge, the way it is, research findings is supposed to be marketed in that way to frustrate you know, others within the field. So that, that's just the point. Okay, thank you. We have more uh, questions and responses. There is another question from Feng Li. Um, is getting native English speaker to edit the manuscripts necessary for people who speak, write, studied the language for 30 years? A rejection will always come with this. Um, I, I don't know whether he or she is presently here, and if she can throw more lights on this, that would be wonderful. Finally, please, if you're here, it would be nice to have you express your idea a bit more. Go ahead, Lee, and unmute yourself, and let's uh, understand what you have said better. Okay, as we look forward to hearing her voice, we we'll move over to Gisa. Gista's uh, text message. Everywhere in the world, researchers do proper research. That is nothing special to Southeast Asia. Mentioning very descriptive and lacking theories of the West is a bit problematic as many of 
all researchers find it quite nostalgic to discuss those views? No. I mean, it puts research into categories which only exist through some constructions made by whom? So I think this goes on to address what we've been talking about. You know, I, I believe it's a contribution. So we go to the next. This is from Peter Underwood. Says, Fing, I totally agree. If the ideas are communicated, which I assume there will be if the paper is being considered for publication, I do not see the benefit for readers or authors of having the minute minute of the language picked apart. Okay, and then we have exactly just I agree. Um, I don't know whether we will have reactions from this or should we go ahead and take the last one and then All right, I'll take the last one. Thank you everyone for the excellent presentations and discussions. Very, very important debates. Greetings from Rio de Janeiro, where 24 black youth man, men were killed by the police in only one operation on Thursday. Wow, it's a pity and uh, we give you are condolence and um, we pray for the peace of the world. So and there, um, yeah, there is I'm just responding. Okay. Yeah. So can we have more comments? Um, I don't know how much longer do we have here? Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, Naomi has a comment. Please, please go ahead and mute yourself and make the comment, please. Um, hello, my name is um, Naomi. I am, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, please go oh, ahead. Okay. Yes. Um, I am currently in Nigeria and um, want to ask a very, or should I say give a very quick comment and I hope it would help someone. Um, I am on an SDG graduate school. I did my PhD with the SDG graduate school. Uh, which had a collaboration with a German university and a university here in Nigeria. I'm currently in Meduguri, University of Meduguri. So mm. one thing that has helped me in my own um, writing is the fact that through this networking, whenever I have an article that I want to submit um, abroad, particularly in Europe, what I do is I send it to a contact in Europe possibly someone who knows about the um, platform. And then they coach me ahead of time before I even submit the article. And I found that, that, that I know it's strenuous and it can be a little bit discouraging because it means more work for us as scholars here in Nigeria, but it has really also reduced, shall I say some sort of rejection that I've been getting. And I found that that um, for the past couple of years that um, the number of articles I've submitted and have been accepted in Europe has really increased. So maybe we could also look at that as another format. You know, if you have networks abroad or if you have networks that abroad that are also publishing in these um, platforms that you want to publish, why don't you also get in contact with them? Thank you. I hope it's an, um, a useful tidbit. Thank you very much, Naomi. That is very useful. Um, you know, we are not really afraid of hard work in Nigeria. We're equal to the task. But um, how many of us would have access That's to true. the people? How many people will know people in these places, place, to write yes. them, to have them coach them, to have the patience. Yeah. So you are lucky. You 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 know you you've had that, mm -hmm. but others will that's not true. have that. So that's it's still true. a problem. It's still us. a problem. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I believe also like on this platform now we can also offer our own help because I really understand and can connect to these issues that are going on. So I can drop my email address just in case someone is interested, you know, 
This is how networks, networks are formed. And this is also how we pay it forward in a way. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Please do that. Yeah, then uh, from Emmanuel. Oh. Thank you very much for the presentations. To me, these were the most impactful presentations I have listened to. This is from Emmanuel. And then uh, Naomi sends her email. And I, I believe everybody can see it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Stefana has a question. Please go ahead and let's have your question. Yes, thank you very much for all this um, inspiring uh, and very important uh, presentations and discussions. And I'm asking uh, myself if all this, I mean, all these presentations and until today, this is the seventh uh, dialogue, like speaking more to the, for the, to the organizers and to the uh, secretary of the ICTM, if all these um, discussions are documented maybe in the, in the end, in a um, way of, in a summary way, in a written way, not, to, not only the video doc, um, documenting, uh, yeah, the, the uh, audio visual um, documentation, so that all these recommendations that you made are not lost, you know, like so that they can really be uh, in, uh, implemented um, into the politics and into the, yes, to the, of the ICTM now particularly. I, I hope that this is something that uh, will happen in uh, some form because uh, it's very important. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. I believe ICTM is recording this and um, we also intend to have it um, even formally done properly and prob uh, possibly publish it with their uh, consent in some form of way. So do we have any more contributions, questions, comments? Uh, can I say something? Please go ahead. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I th I think that uh, uh, it would be a good idea if uh, you know some of the points that you have already already raised about how ICTM can uh, contribute to to the change. Um, if you if you can write the list down or write something to uh, the editor of uh, the yearbook, I think it will be very helpful because, you know, then we have something that is written down um, and that we can discuss and, um, you know, try to make some changes. So uh, I would suggest that besides this video, um, that maybe you can um, uh, put together a list of things that ICTM can do or can attempt to do, you know, in order to try to change the situation. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, we, we're still having more responses. We're having from Kateno Santos to everyone. Congratulations to everyone in the panel for the most important discussion. Thank you for your time and work. And then we have, uh, okay, the, the, the same suggestion is what we have here. So we will certainly do that, I believe. We are happy to do that. So do we have more responses? Responses, questions, comments. Okay, uh, we have from Kim Munoz. Several of the panelists mentioned community-based research and music journals. I am still formulating some ideas about how these fields are different than the social sciences. But do the panel, do the panelists have ideas that they can share about how these are different? Than that they would like to share with us? 
So, uh, Dr. Felicia, Mr. Ilo, Shidubem, and of course, Christian, is anybody ready to share that? That would be wonderful so that we also hear you. All right. This is us. This is from Kim Munoz. Several of the panelists mentioned community-based research and music journals. I am still formulating some ideas about how these fields are different than the social sciences, but do the panelists have ideas that they can share about how these are different that they would like to share with us? Thank you for the presentations. Well, from the perspective of the social sciences, uh, I, I, I don't actually see the, the difference between the research in, uh, in, the, in the music industry and that of social sciences, uh, because uh, the only thing is that, you know, the social sciences, the major area they concentrate is on man. It, it has to do with man. And also when you talk about music, Mix music, it has to do with human too, performance. So yeah. I don't actually the, the, the research in the music, uh, in the in the music and in the social sciences, there's no much uh, difference between these two things. The only thing we are trying to advocate is you know, when you talk about decolonization, uh, uh, there have been so much talk on decolonization. We have decolonized the political arena, we have decolonized the economic sector but we are talking about decolonizing that is trying to make sure that people have access to that is when people have bring out maybe their view on a particular issue they have written something their view that uh, once it's thrown up especially to the global north there should be avenue where people should the acceptance should be there they should be accommodated and their view should be allowed to end are not putting some of these uh, bottlenecks in terms of when they want to publish their work. Uh, 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 there, there'll be some problem throwing it out just uh, at the dying minute to make sure that it doesn't uh, see the light of the day. Uh, as I said, in the social sciences, we also experience, the social sciences scientists also experience this type of thing. For instance, I'll give you one of the uh, experience I had uh, last year during the COVID, we I pop I I we, we, I did a work with someone I co-authored a work, and just towards the end of the review of that my that my research work, uh, I got a shocking letter telling me that, I, in fact, they finished the review and then towards the end they now wrote me that they are sorry that this work is not suitable for publication in this particular journal. You know, that type of thing can weigh someone down from the social sciences perspective. And the same thing is being also a, a experience uh, when you talk about publication in the musical, uh, in the music journal. So I think that um, uh, they, 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 they should play down, people should play, they should play down, especially the foreign journals, they should play down on some of the uh, requirements they normally attach when it comes to publication. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. From Alexander Cannon, he would like to ask a question. Please uh, go ahead, Alexander. Um, thank you all so very much uh, for your comments during this panel. Um, I'm a, I serve as one of the co-editors of Ethnomusicology Forum, and, and I um, have taken a great deal from these presentations. Um, since I started working in this role, I have been thinking about what we need to do about peer review. Um, and I take to heart the suggestions about um, going to uh, local scholars um, to ask for, um, ask local scholars to peer review uh, pieces that are coming from, uh, from locations, uh, Africa um, and, and Nigeria in particular. Um, but I'm wondering if we need a new model. Um, and I'm also wondering whether we even need to continue to have peer review. Um, and I took to heart also um, Dr. Um, Felicia Izegu's suggestion uh, that we look at the assessor's mindset um, and perhaps we need to train the assessors a bit more uh, in order to 
um, you know, give them uh, certain things, certain guidelines to think of as they are undertaking the uh, peer review. So my question is, you know, what, what do we need to do uh, with peer review? Thank you. What do we need to do with peer review? Can I? Uh, thank you very much, Alexandra. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Alexander. I haven't seen That's your face. Beautiful. You can see it now. Um, I think this is a general question for all of us, actually, not necessarily for this panel, because peer review is something that cuts across. Actually, it defines journals world over. That is what the mechanism applied in distinguishing journal from, or journals from other publications. But you see, as much as it provides us with the you know, uh, standard or quality that we look for, or we want to have, it also poses its own challenge, as we have noted, you know, because there are so many issues. I mean, it's like taking a case to court and the disposition of the judge at the moment, may, you know, make the case sell through. The same thing we experience when you go to the embassy, the person interviewing you for your visa, his or her disposition at that moment may affect the visa process in terms of whether it will be issued or not. So we don't want to go into saying outright that there are you know bias or prejudice against anybody but we are saying that what we're seeing is not really encouraging us there are so many people with so many you know uh examples so but let me categorically say that peer review process is important it's good it's okay but should be controlled and should be applied in a way that it has human face Recently, like somebody has said, it has become a process for, you know, weighing uh, a research output as a commodity. In other words, you set a standard to ensure that, that the, the, the process and the proceed, even in competitive ways. There are journals I have seen, I, I subscribe to. Almost all the volumes of this or issues of this journal, you have the same names. In fact, it becomes a personality cult issue. You know, I say this because I have had experience globally. I've been going up and down doing things. And that's why sometimes we talk with experience and it looks like uh, what is wrong. But we've seen these things. You, you have to break through a certain, you know, click in some journals to be able to penetrate. You really have to work hard or, or maybe access that journal through one of those people who have dominated. You know, so it's, it's a hegemony of, you know, uh, personalities or on a kind of ownership of journals in some instances. So, and some of these things are facilitated by the, the peer reviewers, by the editors. The first thing is, who are you? What is your name? Are you known? And who determines that name? Who determines who knows who? It is still those that handle these journals. So it's a, it's a complex thing. And I tell you, now that you're part of it, you will you'll be experiencing some of these things. But I, I think we need to you know, put our hands together and see how we can control this. Because it's getting you know, more and more, it's increasing by the day that the journals are beginning to make it look like it's something set aside for a few or for some you know, caliber of people. And that is why we're feeling it the more. Before now, like we noted in our presentation, it wasn't like that. Some of us... In fact, sometimes you even have people write you, please submit an article in those days and because they've seen that you're doing some things. You send something and they work on it. We are not going to accept that Nigerian use of English is the same as the British use of English. And this must be understood. If you're researching in a cultural context, you apply certain you know, method, you apply, certain, you apply certain degree of communication and connection to be able to get what you want. And when this is done, somebody will sit down and say, this is not British English. Why don't you assist that person to make it British English? It, what, what, what's the difficulty in that? Because I'm not British. I don't know how it is used there. I'm not uh, 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 from Ireland. I don't know how they use English. So, so because the editor is a British man and the, the reviewers are British, they expect that everything has to be in there. And that is what we're saying. It gives a sense of you know, neo-colonization because if it is not in line with what they want, it doesn't exist. But can you go through and look at the content in terms of the fidelity of what is being communicated and see whether it could be worked on? Let me tell you, let me confess, my, my article in Ethnomusicology was published when Blackwell, I think, was the editor. And when I sent that in those days, we used to post it. We are not even, it's not this digital time. 
we used to post it. I just posted it for the sake of it. But he replied to me and he said something that I will never forget, that he will be happy to publish something from someone who is in that culture than from some American or somebody who walks into the culture because he has fancy English and writes something, it will be accepted. That's what he wrote and told me we will work on this material because he saw the content, not, the, not necessarily the language, but he saw the content. And we worked on it. And today it is, it is on ethnomusicology. That's my, my All right. Thank you. Please tell us, I don't know, how many more minutes do we have? Hello. Yes. Sui Beng to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, five minutes okay. more. Hello. Hello. All right, five minutes more. So please, uh, we have to be uh, fast yes. in answering so that we can take in more people. Yes, quickly. Yes. Yes, uh, Ichoma. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you know, yes, the I can question is what we can do about yes. peer review. Yes, yes, I don't have a very good uh, answer. One, yes, please. Uh, uh, decolonization of uh, this uh, process and also expansion of a uh, selection process in the sense that, or like uh, uh, Onyeji said, you see, when, when, when you expand the process and then select more people, for instance, when you have many people, many hands, you can be from north and you can be from west. When you throw up journal, you can get people from, from that particular environment who can review that work in the context of what the, uh, the author or the writer have done. And then it will help that particular uh, uh, work to excel than allowing someone from a different a, a, a environment to review something from another a culture, cultural perspective, it might not work. So my answer is just to decolonize by expansion of a selection process. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Kingsley. That's a good one. Um, so the others, I guess, uh, the other comments are question uh, comments. Okay, let me quickly read read what Solomon has said as we wait for more comments or questions. Another challenge faced by dance and music researchers, especially from Africa, in the process of decolonization is the language of research. Even in post-colonial times, the covert expectation is that scholars use a world language such as English to disseminate their findings and to make their research contribution. The suggestive power of language should not be underestimated nor its dual character as a means of communication and as a career of culture. What are your strategies to deal with this language monopoly to make sure that your research or studies are informed by local languages that capture the epistemologies and ontologies of the community under study, as well as to shape your theoretical, oh my God, as well as to shape your theoretical and conceptual frameworks. This is from Solomon. And then a follow up, excellent questions, Solomon. This is from uh, pa Pedro. In, Mas in Brazil, the learning of English language is a privilege of white, high and middle class people. So when we thinking in producing knowledge in indigenous and Afro, Brazilian perspective. It is very difficult to challenge. Uh, so this is the question of language here now uh, that has been thrown up. How do we approach that and overcome it? I'm sorry, is that a question? Yeah, I, yes. It started as a comment and then it ended up as a question. Um, so this question is, what are your strategies to deal with this language monopoly? So make sure that your research or studies are informed by local languages that capture the epistemologies and ontologies of the community under study, as well as to shape your theoretical and conceptual frameworks. Yeah, I thought somebody had uh, dealt with that in terms of uh, broadening the scope and uh, right. accommodating, you know, uh, research submissions that yeah. have, you know, local content and all that, because okay. if, uh, just I will just, yeah, I will just take it again. I'll look at the, because I had mentioned uh, a theory, you know, if you look at the theoretical framework, 
that I mentioned earlier, like um, African snail sense theory. You know, you have to go into the, the culture, the literature of the people in order to understand what that means. First, the snail is talking about snail. You know, how the snail is able to overcome all the problems on, the, on its path as it goes along its journey with its house and everything, its property on its back. And it does this through its tongue, which is well lubricated to overcome, in, uh, that is able to engage difficult terrains you know, on its path. So what does this mean? Simply when you translate it, it means wisdom. The women need to be like the snail. They need to lubricate their tongues. They need to be very diplomatic in their approach, you know, African feminism, unlike Western feminism, is complementary. You know, it takes into men and women in this work. So you have to be diplomatic. You don't go, which is unlike the Western feminism, which goes outright, most of them, to challenge, you know, the other gender. So if you look at it, what is the snail to the African? You'll be able to understand it. So maybe uh, uh, this is... Uh, this is one way, not maybe, this is one way of bringing in our, uh, our theories. And then, you know, again, we have to take into consideration that Africa is only, you, you, if you compare the epistemology of Western culture to African, it's not quite, uh, you, you know, because we just started writing down our our uh, theories, philosophies, you know, they lived in memories. They, and they, they were, we had oral, trans, uh, oral transmission, which you transmitted orally, all these things. So we need to rearrange them in the way that, uh, you know, that the others can access them. So if, in the process of doing that, if you don't have enough patience to listen and see what we are talking about, you may miss very important theories and principles that are involved in our, uh, in our culture and writings. I hope that has helped at least some bits in, in throwing up that, uh, in answering that question. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you for your contribution. We appreciate everyone. And uh, we have come to the end of our panel. Thanks. Um, and see you another time. Bye.